Indiana Jones, arguably the most iconic action-adventure hero in cinema history. But Indy wouldn't be Indy without his hat. The fedora is the trademark of Indiana Jones. Not only does it make his silhouette instantly recognizable, it's also part of his character. It doesn't fall off, not when punched. Not when riding horseback. Speeding on motorcycles. Not even when he's being dragged underneath a freaking truck. Man, well, how about a tank? All right, well, jumping into water's gonna make it come off, I'm sure. Damn. And when it does come off on only a few occasions, it's only to reiterate just how important it is. Growing up in the 80s, I loved the Indiana Jones films. Like most fans, I found myself wanting to possess the most famous fedora in the world. When I became a teenager and finally had a little money to spend, I bought one of the officially licensed indie fedoras. When I received it, however, my excitement, well, turned to disappointment. It's fake. First of all, other than the color and Indiana Jones writing on the inside, it didn't really look anything like Indy's fedora. Plus, it felt like it was made out of a cheap cardboard material, kind of like a hat you'd get at a costume shop. All this led me to do some research into the actual hat worn by Harrison Ford in the films. To my surprise, I began to notice in looking at the indie films that the hat is actually very different in each film. You would think an iconic character's hat like Indy's wouldn't change in the sequels, but it did. This is the Fedora Chronicles, and we'll cover the differences between the hats in the original indie trilogy. I'll only be scratching the surface of this grand controversy, so for more complete information in history, go to IndieGear.com as most of the information in my video is pulled from their research on their website. So let's start where it all began with Raiders of the Lost Ark and the hero Fedora. George Lucas originally envisioned the character of Indiana Jones to be very similar to other classic treasure hunting heroes, such as Humphrey Bogart's character in The Treasure of the Sierra Madre and Charlton Heston's character in The Secret of the Incas. Obviously, if you're going to be an adventure treasure hunter, you need a hat. So costume designer Deborah Nottleman was given the task to find a hat for Indy. So she went to Herbert Johnson Hat Company of Seville Row, London, as the films were being shot in London at the famous L Street Studios. I saw a hat with a very wide brim, and the crown was a little bit too high. It was their Australian model. And with a couple of fittings, we got the hat right for Harrison. The Australian-style hat was named The Poet. Hmm. Fitting name for a hat whose user spends most of his days beating up Nazis with his bare hands. Anyway, the hat has a very unique look because of the following combined elements. The color of the hat is called sable, and the hat has a very tall straight-sided crown with a single center crease or dent on the top. The front of the crown has a high tight pinch or crease, which goes pretty much all the way down to the ribbon. It also has what is referred to as the Raider's Turn by indie fans, which means that it has been slightly rotated to the right on your head, bringing the ribbon bow closer to the front of the face. The brim is actually a rectangular oval type shape when it's viewed from the bottom. This slight turn causes the brim to alter its shape, giving it a slight flare in the front and the back. It's reported that Harrison Ford then gave the rear brim an upward swoop, and that's how the unique shape of the Raiders fedora came about. The felt material of the hat also behaves uniquely as seen in the Raiders film. The material used was a top-quality rabbit felt from Brazil, which has a distinct floppiness as you can see. All of these elements combined came together to make what we knew as the hero fedora, the hat worn by Indiana Jones in Raiders of the Lost Ark. An interesting side note is that there was actually another hat used by Indy in Raiders, and it, this hat became known as the Grey Clipper Fedora. 
This hat is used in only two scenes in the movie, when he's boarding the plane and at the end in Washington, D.C. This hat appears identical to the brown poet, only it has a gray color felt. There was a long-standing debate on the internet for years whether this hat was indeed gray or more of a tan type color, since viewing the film on different televisions and computer monitors yielded different results in the color. Steven Spielberg and Deborah Nadelman finally settled the debate in 2007, stating that it was indeed gray. The actual clipper hat that was used in the film is probably more valuable than the other poet, I think, simply because it was used in fewer scenes and probably had fewer duplicates made as extra hats weren't needed for the stuntman and such. I'd like to know where the original is and who has it, if anybody knows. So that was the hero fedora we all fell in love with with Raiders of the Lost Ark. The film was a mega box office hit, so the sequel, The Temple of Doom, soon followed. Naturally, I, like everybody else, assumed they would use the exact same hat as it defined the character of Indiana Jones. The film opens with Indy dressed like James Bond and hatless at a club in Shanghai with some bad Chinese dudes. Once all that fun is over, we finally get to see the Indy we all knew in the airplane. And right away, if you look closely, you can see big differences in the fedora. The crown is slightly shorter than the poet. It also now has a very noticeable taper from top to bottom. The high pinch down the front is gone, and it has been replaced with what appears like two dents in the sides. And also, the raider's turn is now gone as the ribbon sits above the ear. This makes the brim lay flat and undistorted, losing much of the hat's character with it. The material is obviously different as well as the hat has lost its apparent floppiness and seems to be a lot stiffer than it was before. This left indie fedora fans scratching their heads in bewilderment. What happened to the original Raiders fedora? I did some research on the matter, and it turns out it's actually a very complicated story, so I'll just sum it up briefly for you. Obviously, when filming began on the Temple of Doom, the production needed another batch of new indie hats. So once again, they returned to Herbert Johnson, the maker of the original Raiders fedora, to fulfill the order. They soon discovered that the original hat block, the piece of wood used to form the shape of the poet hat, was gone. Whoosh is gone. Where? Well, nobody knows where. Apparently, sometime between the filming of Raiders and the start of Temple of Doom, the hat block had either been sold, worn out, trashed, or just lost completely. You'd think once Raiders was a huge mega hit, Herbert Johnson would have wanted to capitalize on that success and lock the hat block in a secure place, or at least made castings or duplicates for a possible licensing deal to sell official indie hats to all the fans. Sadly, to this day, nobody knows what happened to the block for sure. It has become a real lost indie artifact to the fans. So, for Temple of Doom, Herbert Johnson used a different block shape to make the indie hats, and the results are clearly visible. Sadly, the rabbit felt from Brazil that was used in the original Raiders hat was no longer being supplied to Herbert Johnson, so they actually used a stiffer Borsellino felt instead, which is why the hat appears stiffer on screen. In the eyes of the diehard indie fans, this hat was a major failure. failure. But despite the discrepancies in Indy's trademark fedora, Temple of Doom was indeed a success at the box office. So, Lucas and Spielberg set out to make what was, at the time, the final installment of the indie franchise, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. By now, all the filmmakers had heard the complaints from the fans about the Temple of Doom hat. So, Herbert Johnson, in an effort to redeem themselves with the fans, recreated a new hat block that was close in shape to the original Raiders fedora. It appears to have the same characteristics, only not as dramatic. The tall, straight, untapered crown was back. The high front pinch is slightly tighter than the Temple of Doom hat, but still not quite the same as in Raiders. And the brim appears to be slightly shorter, but not by much. The Raiders turn still didn't make its return, however, as we can see the bow directly above the ear. Because of the absence of the Raiders turn, Harrison Ford had to shape the brim by hand to give it the flare and swoop we saw in Raiders. Because of this handmade flare and swoop, it's not quite the same as it was before, but it was close enough. The felt material was apparently the same Borsellino felt used in the Temple of Doom, so the hat does have a little stiffer look than it did in Raiders. All in all, it was good enough effort for the fans, and The Last Crusade was another box office hit. This time, learning from the past, Herbert Johnson preserved the hat block used in the making of this film, 
and you can purchase a Last Crusade style poet to this day. As you can see, what we have here are three different hats for three indie films. Which hat is your favorite? Please comment and discuss below. Most indie fans will have a personal preference and style depending on their favorite film, and will seek out to own the one they like most. I would recommend avoiding the official licensed indie fedora for the diehard fan. It is very affordable on the plus side, but if you're a big indie fan like myself, you'll just be disappointed with it. So, where should you go to pick up your true indie fedora of choice? Well, there are many hat makers that make indie style fedoras. The two I would recommend are the Penman Hat Company and the Adventure Built Hat Company. Both of them make their hats by hand, so be prepared to wait around six months when you place an order. I believe that both companies offer all three indie styles from the films, and they also make them out of pure 100% beaver felt, which is the most durable felt you can buy, really, and also rabbit felt, which is kind of more accurate to what you see on screen. I put Penman Hat Company first because they are very good quality hats and at a good value price at around $400 for a pure beaver hat. Adventure Built are just as good in quality, but a little more pricey for the pure beaver hat at around $600. They, though, have the distinction of making the hats used in the Indiana Jones 4 film, so they have become very popular. Personally, I chose the Penman hat for affordability and also because of this YouTube video featuring the hat maker himself. Check it out. Penman Raiders 100% Pure Beaver, a floppiness of the felt after just wearing it. Or you could just kind of... Do that to it. And then put it back in the shape. Flop it on your head. Damn, now that's an indie hat. Thanks for watching.